everybody. I am going to be talking to you today about how I made Topher's Farah cosplay. So first of all, Farah is <laughs> Farah was something that I was super dreading <laughs> because it is an entire suit of armor and it's not the easiest to try to do. So I'm just gonna kind of do an after the fact uh, how I made her. Normally I photograph the process and create work logs for our patrons, but there was just too much going on all at once and I kind of got things mixed up and couldn't figure out how I got to certain places so a work log wasn't really an option. So here's a video on how I did Farah. So I guess we'll start with the helmet. Oh, and I should preface this with this is the jackal skin. I know that this should be blue and like an eagle head, okay? So here is the helmet. The helmet's lights do turn on. There, you can kind of see it. Three-dimensional. So this is all created from 8mm EVA foam that I got from TNT Cosplay Supply. Their stuff is great. It is a high-density foam. If you're wanting to make things out of foam, I highly recommend them. But so to create this helmet, um, I essentially found screenshots or took them myself of of the helmet which isn't entirely easy to do the best shots I found were of her uh, poses when waiting to begin the match because she has it like in her arm and so I essentially went through and you can't see <laughs> all that I did because I blended a lot of the seams <laughs> with a quick seal but I, for every geometric piece on her helmet, I tried to translate that onto a piece of foam. So I essentially, starting with the nose, drew the shape of her nose, and then I drew the next panel, and the next panel, and the next panel, and just kept doing that until I had the entire snout and eyeball area. Um, it looks a lot simpler now that half the seams are hidden and I totally went overboard with it because obviously they were unnecessary. Um, but then when the snout was done and the cheeks and like the eyebrows, I created like the domish helmet, which was cre like forced into the dome shape by just kind of slicing out triangles from this piece of foam so that naturally, you know, turned into a dome. And then, you know, all you have to do after that is add the back guard or whatever. And then the, the ear things are just kind of glued on top of that. And then these are glued right on top of this outer rim thing. <sighs> it took like two days, so don't let this fool you, right? In order to get this indentation on these, I used my, uh, my soldering iron and just kind of carefully burned into it. That way I didn't have to add more foam on top to create this. And for the eyes, I've, I've found a, a way that I really like to do anything that glows. So I get those somewhat opaque page dividers that you use in binders, and I get a pack of them. So you'll add like blue, green, red, yellow. And so I take those and I'll totally cover the inside of the opening and then I'll get some white tissue paper and double layer it and glue it directly to the inside of, you know, the color that's going to be glowing. And then I put fairy lights inside and the strand of fairy lights, I want to say they usually have like 18 or 20 um, on them. But so I put half on one side, half on the other. And then to help brighten it even more, I took tin foil and glued it to the underside that way a lot of that light is being bounced back out the front and it just made a big difference between having the foil and not having the foil. Uh, the light switch is also glued to this inside area so that's easy to turn on and off. The chin strap, which was the only part I was kind of concerned about how I would get it in correctly, um, I made it from Warbla which ended up being the best choice because it was stiff and I didn't want it to move and it was also 
I could make it into the exact shape that I wanted. So there is like the cheek, the chin, and then the other cheek. Now how I attached it to the helmet itself, because you know you want it to be able to move so you can help get it on and off your head better, is there are two pieces of elastic, one on each cheek, that then is glued to like right on the other side of this essentially. And so that's how it is taken on and off. Now, <laughs> my head is a little bit smaller than Topher's in the way that it sits on my head. Um, there's a bunch of like empty space up here. But how he saw all day is I left this open. Normally there's supposed to be foam or something blocking it because she doesn't have a hole under there. But these don't actually let you see. So <laughs> we left this open so that if he just held his head up a little bit, he could still see where he was going, which ended up being great because him being blind in a busy convention center is just never fun. All right, so now for the shoulder pieces. So this is giant, and this is the first time I've ever made something so giant because um, it doesn't just like sit on her shoulder like that. No, it's like way up here. So I had to kind of figure out how to do that. But before I kind of get into that, first I had to just make the appropriate shape. So this is all just, this was a lot of eight millimeter and four millimeter foam that I just kind of layered on top of one another. It was a lot of figuring out how, you know, there's obviously a base and then on top of that base you have this part and then you have like this weird designy part and it's it was honestly just think of it as a puzzle how do the puzzles fit together and so once you kind of have your base that is the size and shape that you need it's easier to go in and just start kind of building on top of it layer by layer um, this or her uh, rocket barrage comes out from does not actually lift off. Uh, that just seemed like way more work than I wanted to do. Um, so it is just glued directly on. And you can see some of the seams. I had to like build this up to get it to an appropriate height and I didn't sand the edges even. You can also see the seam like right here. Um, Cause I, I cut out like this U shape on, for both sides and then just glued a piece of foam over top of it. Uh, and there is a hole back there, but I mean, I really don't care. Didn't care. I could cover that up if I wanted. It just, it doesn't bother me. But in order to get it to sit raised on the shoulder, or to attach to the shoulder in general, mind you, I had to create this lift on the underside of the shoulder. And so when it sits, it's already going to be elevated, right? Well, in order to get it to stay on, I attach it to the torso harness. Um, and via two pieces of Velcro. There's this one right here, and then there's this one at the front. I didn't need a back one, so I didn't really worry about it. Um, and it did the job that I needed. Now, even with those, since they were so close to the edge, it would like, it would sloop or slump, kind of like that, and I didn't like that. So I went in and added some nylon cord about a couple inches farther down where it would still like sit on your shoulder so it has that extra support so that's kind of what it looks like it is right on like the edge of my shoulder but if it's properly velcroed it is going to stay in the upright position that it needs to be you don't have to worry about going like that because let's be honest that's like the worst <laughs> so that's how i did the shoulders so now we'll get into the torso especially since i just kind of referenced it so for the torso i didn't really worry about the back because the back is going to be the jetpack backpack. So for the front, this was also just a bunch of kind of uh, piecing a puzzle together. I started with these middle chunks. There are three of them and the top two, I just kind of, I didn't need them to be this long, so I just kind of chopped them off at about the halfway mark. Um, and then I created this underneath piece which is kind of just like a big V, that's like a big fancy V. Um, and then we have this middle piece right here, and to help it get that angle, I sliced 
uh, like a 45 degree on the inside and then glued the sides of the corner together so that they make this nice hard ridge which is what I wanted um, and then this is just kind of a sloped triangle two of them glued together the insides are cut at 45 degree angles to help create that uh, that sharpness same with like these anytime I want a sharp edge I'll cut it at 45 degree angles normally that means that it would be you know forming a 90 degree angle but depending on how uh, tightly you glue the, glue the corners together it will or won't do that so it's totally up to you um, and then this piece right here this under piece kind of cut into like out an M from it and uh, put in my page divider stuff with here you can see a little bit better so here's the the page divider I used two layers of red because one layer wasn't red enough when the light was turned on and you can see the tissue paper that I used to help diffuse the light and the tin foil that I used to help magnify it and there's a little hole it doesn't really affect the brightness of it and I put I always try to put the battery pack somewhere that is in reach enough that if you needed to turn it off to conserve battery life it wouldn't be too difficult so it's on the edge and you can see like how the light kind of goes all the way around um, I definitely glued something incorrectly because you can see like this dark shadow that is I think it was where the material started gluing directly onto, you know, the underside of the foam, but it glued down away from the lights, so the the light just won't go that far. But it doesn't really matter. You can't really tell. But uh, I used four millimeter foam for these thinner parts and just burned in the designs. I didn't, like, I know most, like, Farah is supposed to be more on, like, the bulky, chunky side as far as, like, the thickness of her armor, and that's cool, but I also didn't, I wanted to do something slimmer for Topher since, you know, he is a slender kind of guy, and I thought that trading some of that chunkiness for, you know, just thinness, I guess, would look better on his frame, and it did, so I was glad that I made the choice that I did. Uh, all of these little areas are just, <laughs> they were like this shape originally, whatever you'd call that, and then I just covered it in a layer of foam, and then, you know, had one on the bottom to kind of make that tube, and then all of these are burned in. I didn't really go into heavy shading with these because it just kind of looked wrong, so who knows. <laughs> um, to put it on, this connects directly to the jetpack, which I will be talking about last because it is in a closet. <laughs> um, but so the harness comes around the shoulders like so. The Velcro that the shoulder pads attach to are here and here, which I figured out by just putting it on Topher and seeing where it needed to sit. And there are two little nylon cords at the very end, and these are with snaps. So. For the jetpack backpack, it is essentially a backpack, um, in the framework at least. So what he does is he puts the backpack on first, then he puts the torso on, and the other side of the snaps are on the snaps of, or they're on the straps of the backpack. So it just goes directly to the backpack and it just sits there. This is super light, so it really doesn't add very much to the strain of wearing the wings in general. And then to get the sides closed, I have more cording on the sides that is then just tied behind. I could have used belt buckle or something, and I just didn't. So that's totally a personal preference. Uh, we just tied it in a knot underneath the backpack harness. So for the thighs, the thighs are kind of weird, right? Because they don't just like hug your thigh, it also kind of goes away from her thigh at like a weird angle and it hugged the crap out of me. Um, 
So mostly I was just measuring the width of his thigh, the height that I needed it to be, cutting out the, the knee area and the back of the knee area, um, gluing things on, and then I had to like cut out this U <laughs> and then like insert this weird triangle thing. <laughs> um, and also had to glue in like a little, a little bridge to kind of create that depth and that's all that it really took. To keep it closed, uh, it uses D-rings and nylon cord, and to keep it up on to the bodysuit and the legs, there is just a little bit of Velcro right here. Now, funny thing about Velcro, sticky Velcro will betray you. So just know that outright. I knew it, I used it anyways, it was awful, and so I ended up going back in and you can't really sew down sticky Velcro after the fact on fabric um, because it'll just ruin your machine's needles because of the stickiness strength of it. So I used E6000 and just like re-glued them on and then I did the same thing with the foam parts because it's stronger than hot glue and it worked so I'm happy. The shins are kind of the same except there's no weird sticking out parts of this, no like weird geometry. Um, yeah, it's just the base piece covered with whatever this weird Y looking thing is. You can see some of the, the shading that I tried on it. And it's just kind of like gray and it doesn't look bad, but it's just not my favorite. But also kept clothes with D-rings and these straps. Um, since the straps tend to be rather long, we just kind of tuck them back inside of the armor. But I like when things can open up and collapse uh, because of the, the way that it's held open or closed because it makes it easier to transport or uh, storage. So here's the forearm. Forearm is pretty easy. It was just to the shape of his arm. We cut out like, you know, this U-E area and put in this weird like elbow pad, I guess and you know just made it a little three-dimensional by adding like a little kind of bridge and the bicep is just as simple it's just a tube on your bicep covered by another layer which is this one um yeah it was super easy it fits uh the the arm stuff is the only stuff where i will just go ahead and close it all the way it doesn't really need to adjust Back to the legs. Here are the knee pads. I just used elastic that goes directly behind the knee and uh, so it sits right over top of the knee like your knee would be about right here. They kind of wiggle around but it gives more flexibility. That way you don't really have to worry about breaking it as easy. Um, there's two of them, of course. Always gotta come in two. So next we will talk about the crotch. <laughs> so <laughs> far is interesting, right? She's got crotch armor. <laughs> so here's the front and here's the back. The back kind of like has this pentagon-ish shape um, to kind of like hook it under. But uh, <laughs> it wanted to like stick out like this when he wore it. So I had to add Velcro to the inside of both pieces and then put Velcro on the bodysuit at the crotch and at the butt so that it could actually like squish on and hold. And there's a lot of points of contact that can be undone here and this was sp specifically because if anything were to get like knocked into or pulled incorrectly then it would just like come off instead of breaking. But the front is held to the straps on the side via Velcro. And it's super easy to get in and out of. One of the best parts of this costume is it didn't take more than maybe five minutes to get in and out of, which was super impressive because most of our stuff takes at least 20. And here's the other arm, other forearm, the rocket barrage, I guess the concussive blast actually. But 
Yeah. It doesn't glow. I mean, it's not supposed to. It's a rocket. But it was just a lot of... So I created this piece. And then I created, like, this loopy piece on the inside. The rocket itself is a tube of foam, which TNT just started selling. And I love it because it makes my life so much easier. And I essentially just wrapped it in four millimeter foam, like here and here, created like these weird notchy looking things, burned in this detailing right here. And like you can see, it's kind of like squished. I made it too high, but I didn't really care at that point. And the back is totally open. Um, I'm not totally sure. I think it's supposed to be that way, honestly, because that would be like the easiest way to reload it. And I didn't really see pictures that said otherwise, but you can see this kind of like messy. I didn't sand down the edge of that to try to make it even. And that was partially because this was a very last minute decision. <laughs> like two weeks before the convention, I decided that I was just going to go ahead and finish this for Topher if he helped me. And so we did, and it was the best and the worst. <laughs> What are you stuck to? Oh, this was... <laughs> I made a little something to go on top of his shoe. And it ended up kind of looking funny and unnecessary, so I didn't use them. But here's the hands. So I took the bodysuit, which was this like silver Lyrica suit. And I always cut off the gloves nowadays because it makes it easier to eat and drink stuff. But so far, it only really has armors on her fingers and on the back of her palm. So to keep the armor on the back of the palm and still like help it to be washable, um, it is just Velcroed on. This part is foam. All these parts are warbler, which, you know, is hard. It's much more durable. And I glued them onto the glove directly with E6000. These are not Velcroed. I don't really worry about uh, these things coming off or need to take them off when I wash it. Technically, you can wash foam um, if you wash with cold or even warm water, I think. Um, definitely cold, though, and the foam won't get hurt or anything, but it's just easier to take it off, uh, just in case. So yeah, there are just two layers that were kind of curved like a bridge and warmed up so that they stuck directly to one another. And it's weird because like these go out while your fingers go down, but you could probably like, like really hurt someone. Most of what I make could probably really hurt someone. <laughs> All right, the last piece before I go and get the backpack is the gun. <laughs> so this gun is totally inaccurate. This is just a super soaker hydro cannon um, by Nerf. Yeah, like it even still, you can see all the like logos and stuff, but um, it was like the perfect size in length. This part is inaccurate, so honestly, if you just cut that off and held it like that, it'd probably look better. Um, I left it because it's just easier to carry. But uh, yeah, it's pretty big. And we had to glue this part down um, at Anime Expo. They said it wasn't allowed to move, essentially. So we did it, and it worked. And all we did was spray paint it. <laughs> we literally did not take anything off of it. My sister found this in a dumpster when she was staying out here for her internship, and she gave it to me because she's like, well, maybe you'll be able to use it. And she was right, so. Shout out to Amber for helping complete this costume because <laughs> I wasn't really thinking about the gun and where I was or wasn't going to get one or make one and it was just sitting in the hall still from where she put it. So I'm going to go grab the wings and rearrange the setup a little bit because those things are big. Okay, and last but not least, the wings. So before I pick them up and start showing you guys uh, the ins and outs of them, they weigh about three to four pounds. So, they're very light. This could work. <laughs> so, here's the inside. Uh, the harness itself is made from a piece of wood, like two by four, kind of, that I cut down to be 
the length of most of Topher's back. Um, now her actual jetpack is supposed to be much bulkier, like I said earlier. I was trying to make like more of a slender version. Um, so the the harness or the back of it isn't quite as wide as it normally would be if you were making it to scale, but it's also a part that you don't really see much. The wings themselves have flexibility to them. They move around, which is great for conventions because if you bump into someone, there is way less chance of them breaking or you hurting someone severely. So in order to attach the wings to the harness, I drilled holes in the wood and fed through some wire. And you can see the tops of the wire right there. But there are three points of contact for the wire. There's the top, the middle, and the bottom. And originally I was going to make these removable, but because of how I fashioned the outside of this, they can't actually come out anymore. I wish I still did, but eh, it's okay. But um, so it is PVC, about an inch around that slides into these in order to bend the PVC. I had to severely heat it up with my heat gun um, so that I could get that turn. I had to wear oven mitts. So if you ever have warming up PVC to the point of it bending, please remember PVC is thick and it is plastic. And if it is hot enough to bend, you are going to get burned. So please protect your hands. <laughs> um, so the PVC goes through the wing to about to about here, um, which was essentially sandwiched between two layers of eight millimeter foam in the general shape of the wings, and then the engine was built on separately. You can kind of see inside the engine, there are these three like kind of vents. They're only maybe four inches long. I don't know if you can really see the end of them, but this one isn't even like attached all the way, it kind of wiggles. <laughs> Um, all the details are burned in with my soldering iron. The pattern for the wings, I cannot take credit for. Uh, there is a cosplayer that goes by. It's either Jemina or, or something. I'm really sorry I'm butchering your name. Uh, she created the first uh, Anubis skin for it that I ever saw. And you're not allowed on the couch. <laughs> but she created the first one that I saw and she shared the pattern that she used for the wings online and I will share a link. <coughs> Excuse me. Kitty, baby, you cannot be up here. I love you, go play in this box. Yeah. <laughs> but I will share the link to the wing template in the description because it was super helpful and made my life so much easier. Um, but yeah, that's essentially how I made all of Farah. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I will do my best to answer them, though it is pretty complicated. So as far as any of the patterning goes, I probably won't be able to help. Uh, as for any other construction notes I can think of, I use contact cement to glue all of my foam pieces together. I use the soldering iron to burn in any of the indented designs. And I used, um... gosh, what's it called? I use quick seal, uh, the, uh, the stuff you use in your bathrooms, <laughs> caulk, that's what it is. I used um, quick seal caulking, you know, tubes to fill in any of the gaps uh, in order to blend some of those uh, edges more seamlessly. I will also include a link to the Evil Ted's channel because he is who I learned how to do caulking from in that method and it's super helpful. So thank you everyone for checking out this video. Stay miraculous everybody!